to KnitCast. Today is Wooly Wednesday. It is May 26th, um, and we are here for some knitting. Um, welcome to KnitCast. My name is Jessie, and this is Miss Laid Pages. Um, KnitCast is where I talk about all of my knitting projects and um, any new knitting stuff that I've heard about and any new yarn that I have and all the, all the yarn and fiber stuff. So, that's what I talk about on this time, this this particular video. Um, I do talk about cross stitching on floss tube on Fridays. So if you're looking for for cross stitch stuff, you'll have to wait a couple days. <laughs> uh, but welcome if you're new and if you are returning. Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you checking out the videos. Uh, I'm gonna get right into it. I'm recording late in the day today, and it is hot as all get out in the craft room. So let's just get right into it. <laughs> I don't know what the weather is like where y'all are, but it is over 90 degrees here, and it's not even June, and um, the humidity is making the heat index, I don't know, five or six degrees hotter than the actual temperature, and did I say it's not even June yet? Like, oh my gosh, um, I, I don't know what the, the summer is going to be like for us here. Anyway, let's get right into it. So you can see um, I've got two whips to, to talk about today. Uh, whips are works in progress, so these are projects that I'm currently working on. The first one here, I've tried to do some color balancing, and it's still looking really strange to me. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, this is my temperature shawl. Um, let me see if I can pull the camera up a little bit so you can get a little bit more scope here. I apologize if that's too wiggly for you. Um, so this is my temperature shawl. Um, this is mostly my own pattern. Um, it's based off of either a Bernat or a Caron pattern that came on um, a Scanny Yarn. Um, so it's a super simple pattern that I am just um, adding in colors based on um, what the high temperature is where I am for that day. Um, so this was, here's the corner here where I started. Um, this is, um, these six rows here are just the setup rows, so the actual temperatures don't start to here. And this looks, this is supposed to be blue. It is the wrong color. It is very much the wrong color here. <laughs> the camera is not picking up the colors correctly at all, so I have done something horribly wrong um, with the color correction. Hold on just one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. I think we're recording. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> so I've just gone and put back the defaults because um, I realized that that color was really, really awful and that was not what it was supposed to be. Um, so um, here is the very beginning. This first blue line here um, was January 1st. And then um, I've stitched to these black sections here. These black sections are the dividers between the months. So January goes uh, from here to here, and then we have February up to this black line, and then I actually finished March since last time we chatted. So let me see if I can get most or all of it. It's not going to all get on camera because it's just, it's big. Um, let me see if I can try to show you. So. <laughs> Um, it's big. I have to scoot way back <laughs> and I still can't get it on the other camera. Um, so you can kind of see that's that's pretty long so far. Um, but yeah, so I have finished all of March. I am now into April's um, April's dates and temperatures. Um, so that's where we are at this point. I'll try to put it up as far on the screen as I can. Um, so there we go. So here is, oh yeah, you can see the whole, you can see the whole of, uh, of March here. So March starts with this green, uh, row right here and then ends with this orange one. So orange is in the eighties, I think. Um, yeah, orange should be like, it stops at, uh, 82 or 83 and then red picks up, um, at 83 or 84. Um, so you can see in March we had one pretty warm day there that where it was over 84 degrees or over 82 degrees, um, something like that. Um, but most, and we actually have a lot of uh, temperatures in the 80s or high 70s. So that's what these orange rows are. And then um, so like mid to high 70s would be the yellow. So we actually had a pretty warm March overall. 
uh, if you can see. And then we had a cold spell <laughs> at the beginning of April, or a cooler spell. Um, so uh, I want to say that the, the blue is in the 40s or 50s. I could actually get my notebook, but I, I just, I didn't bring it with me, so... Um, but yeah, blue is in the 40s or 50s, so it's actually relatively warm for cold temperatures, but in Virginia, uh, we rarely get below freezing temperatures. So pretty much anything that would be considered uh, freezing or below was purple, and then anything above that to like mid 40s or something like that is blue. So we had some 40s and 50s uh, at the beginning of April, and then we'll see where we go from there. So um, it's going to quickly get into the reds and the, uh, the bright pinks. Um, as we get into May and June, because it's, it's hot, y'all. It's hot. <laughs> so this is definitely going to be very, very interesting, um, especially because this is a nice, thick, super thick, this is a, a worsted weight, if not heavier, um, yarn. So this is quite warm as I'm knitting it. <laughs> so, um, and the... Uh, the camera doesn't want to focus. Okay, but that's where we are with the, uh, the temperature shawl. So I've... I've uh, I've actually surpassed myself from the last time I did a temperature project uh, because I didn't get through March during the year that it was happening the first time around. So this time I've at least gotten through March, so I've beat <laughs> I've beat that record. I've gotten into April, um, and I think part of the reason I was working on this so much is because um, I definitely had a few days last week and over the weekend, or um, not a few days over the weekend, but I had I had some time over the last couple of weeks where I either wasn't feeling well or my brain was just kind of not um, wanting to function. The way I wanted it to and I tend to pull this out when I'm in that space when I need something meditative or when I need something when I need to do something with my hands but I need to not have it be too complicated this is the project that I bring out because um it's uh it's really repetitive which is really it's not so great for most days um, because most days I need more something more engaging than that but there are a lot of days where the last thing I need is something that's going to require brain power, um, and this is really awesome for those days. If I'm stressed out, or if my, my brain is just on its last legs, that's a weird metaphor, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but if I'm, if I'm having a bad brain day, as I say, um, this is a great project for that. Because it's so simple, it's kind of meditative, and I just sit and I watch my favorite shows, and I, I knit, 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 and... Um, and it's great. Uh, and I've also noticed um, that I can fold it into a nice little square at this point. <laughs> so um, I probably am going to work on making this into a sort of poncho situation uh, once it's finished because it's going to be huge. I think it'll make a great sort of like jacket kind of situation. So let me just put this over here out of the way. The other thing I've worked on, I actually have worked on my um, Secret Life of Cats and Dogs. So this is um, a Casapinka pattern. Um, Casapinka uh, is Bronwyn. I can't remember her last name at the moment, um, but she's a fantastic designer. I talk about her all the time. Secret Life of Cats and Dogs was a, a mystery knit along that she came out with at the end of uh, 2020, uh, in December of 2020, designed to be um, knitted up with um, an Advent set of yarn. Um, now I have run into a quandary, I'll talk about it in a second, um, but I've worked a lot on this. Um, so I believe, I believe when last we talked about this particular one, and I did show it, um, if you haven't seen this entire piece, it's huge. It's um, about as long as I am tall at this point. So it's, um, it's over five feet long. Um, it will probably be over six feet long when it's finished. Um, and I think where, I think we were in this, area here uh, when last we talked but um, let me finish one thought before moving into the other so if uh, if you haven't seen the full thing it's quite long um, I actually sort of scrolled through it as it were <laughs> in my last video um, so if you want to see the entire thing up to about this point then check out the last knit cast I think this knit cast is number 32 so 31 will be the one where I went kind of went through the whole thing so, um, and uh, as you may recall, I was trying to decide just how many repeats I was going to do for this section. So ultimately what I ended up doing was just one uh, repeat with the, the single color here. So this line is not as visible because it's the same color as the background. Um, and then I did one final repeat with the contrasting color. So instead of, I think, it, I forget how many repeats it called for, something like five or six. Um, so instead of having a big, huge section here, um, I actually shortened it quite a bit by just doing a couple of those repeats. 
And then we moved on to, and I think that was section, that should have been 19. Yeah, so this blue section, this is one of my favorite colors in the whole set. Um, this set is from Ruby and Rose's yarn. This was her 2020 advent set. There were 24 mini skeins. Um, and this is color number 20. And this is a really cool stitch. Um, so let me bring the camera in a little bit closer. Pardon the movement. I'm just going to try to get as close as I can and still have the camera focus. Um, so this is a really cool um, knit here. So what you do is you actually, you're doing stockinette in between, but you're slipping a stitch um, every two rows or so. Um, so the first two rows you slip uh, one stitch. I forget exactly what the what the pattern is, um, but you slip that one for two rows, and then you come back and do two regular rows, and then you slip one again, and that's how you're getting this sort of like running loop uh, in these columns here, which looks really really cool. So that was a really fun one to do. So that was section 20, and I finished that over the weekend or earlier this week, um, and then I've. And this is actually a finished section as well. So this is section 21, and um, it is finished to um, to my liking. Actually, I could do, if I wanted to, um, the pattern calls for three more repeats, but I didn't want to do that. So, <laughs> um, so what I've done here is, um, or as you can see here, there's some... Um, at the join here between the two sections, there are these really cool sort of flowery kind of things happening. And that's done by actually um, pulling a loop up through the center um, hole created here by this, um, this slipped stitch there. Um, so you get this really interesting pattern that looks sort of flowery across the bottom of that. And then it's a, a sort of ribbing um, up from there that corresponds with those and that looks really cool. The ribbing isn't as clear as I would like it to be. Um, and you can see here, and I think um, the knitting nurse actually, she had commented on one of my videos, oh I can see that I've got a, a twisted stitch there so that's part of that. Um, but she had commented on one of my videos um, kind of giving some helpful hints as to how you can get your um, your stitches to be a little bit more even and uniform on the sides. I'm not sure if that if those um, if that advice would help with um, some of my wonkiness. Uh, and it could just be I need more practice. I've only been I've only been really knitting like consistently knitting for about a year now. Um, it's a little bit over a year, so I have a feeling that I just need to I need to practice and get my tension more even and that kind of stuff. So. Um, but yeah, so this, this section is finished. I'm actually ready to move on to section 22, which has some marling. I just didn't start it yet, uh, partly because I knew I needed to film this video and it's actually easier if the, if the piece is not connected to a live ball of yarn. So, <laughs> uh, but that's where I am with that. So I've done, um, as you can see, I've done quite a bit of work um, on this piece. Um, so that's, that's quite a lot of stitching, that whole section there. Um, and at this point, uh, I think once I finished, I can't remember, I think it was at the end of, of section 21, it says you have 13 inches left to go. So we have 13 inches still to add to this. Um, so if it's five feet now, it's definitely going to be more than six feet when I'm finished. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are with Secret Life of Cats and Dogs. Now let's talk about some plans, um, because, uh, oh, my quandary. Yes, let me get back to <laughs> It's been one of those days. Um, I'm having an ADHD brain day. Um, so the quandary I have is that the kit that I'm using, um, the uh, the kit from Ruby and Roses, came with 24 mini skeins of yarn, uh, but there's actually 25 sections in this pattern. So section 25 is supposed to be color 25, and I don't actually have a 25th color for this set. So uh, I'm going to have to, once I get to that point, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do to finish it off. Um, so I have a lot of options. I mean, certainly I have 24 colors from this um, that I can take, I can, excuse me, pick and choose from those to do to color 25. I do have a mini skein or two, <laughs> so I could substitute in something else. Um, I just, I'm not sure where I'm, I am on that just yet, but that is a decision that I'll have to make in just a couple of sections. Um, so 25 is supposed to be a separate color and I just, I, I don't have a specific color for it yet. So that's something that I'll have to decide. Um, but as I was saying, this is a Casapinka um, piece and um, uh, 
so part of my plans include yet another Casapinka jar. <laughs> I promise I'll knit something that was not um, designed by Casapinka at some point some point um but uh, i was super excited because i learned recently that casa pinko will be doing um uh, she's actually collaborating with lady dye yarns um on a uh an mcal in july so an mcal is a mystery knit along if you're not familiar uh so cal k-a-l is uh knit along and mcal is a mystery knit along um and that's basically where sort of like some of the uh, the cross stitch alongs that we do um, it's where you get a piece of the pattern at a time and you sort of work on it uh, through time and you don't really know what you're knitting until you're finished um, or at least you don't know how it's all going to turn out until you're finished um, and I don't necessarily recommend these for all designers um, but I've done enough mystery knit alongs with Casapinka that I trust her implicitly um, it's always fabulous no matter what so um, so she's doing, uh, in collaboration with Lady Dye Yarns, a mystery knit along, and it's a mini, it's like a small knit along. So um, it's set up so that the, um, the pattern is going to be knittable either with one skein of um, fingering weight yarn. Um, so that would be about 400 yards. So you can use one skein, one color, if that's what you want to do. Or you can use five 20 gram mini skeins. Um, now, Lady Dye Yarns does have um, mini skein sets set up for this. You can go to ladydyeyarns.com, and assuming they still have stock availability, um, I think there's a wait list if they're out too. Um, you can go and you can purchase one of the um, the five the sets of five mini skeins that they have set up specifically for this. Now, I personally don't need to buy more more mini skeins for an MCAL because I have all of the mini skeins. Um, if you've been watching at all, <laughs> you know that I have a few skeins of yarn. Uh, so I'm not gonna be purchasing from Lady Dye Yarns for this um, because um, I have so many fantastic mini skeins, not the least of which is my Little Bishes Stitches Yarn of the Month Club, which comes with five 20 gram mini skeins every month. Um, so it's entirely possible, this is what I'm thinking at the moment, it's entirely possible that I'm going to pick one of one month of my Little Bishes Stitches yarn and use that for the MCAL since it already comes with a coordinating set of five colors um, I think that might be just the thing so I'm super excited about that to be able to stash dive um, minis specifically um, because I love minis I keep buying minis and part of the reason that I buy minis is because you can get all the colors when you buy minis for the same about the same price as one skein full skein of yarn you can get five different colors <laughs> so i get all the colors with the mini skeins um so yeah to have uh, to have an mcal coming up where i can make use of those mini skeins is very very exciting um so that's in july and then in august um i didn't realize this but um Casapinka does an annual mcal um so i believe it'll be a whole new chart or i keep saying chart because i'm so used to cross stitching um, it'll be a whole new pattern from anything else that she's done, but it will be a mystery knit along in August. And um, last year, if I'm remembering how everything shook out correctly, uh, last year's mystery knit along was um, the Sharon Show shawl. That was the, the MCAL for last August. So um, that was super fun. Still working on it, but <laughs> but of course, if there's another MCAL, I'll be joining it. So especially if it's something where I can use yarn that I already have, and it might actually be a really great opportunity to use the yarn that I purchased from uh, from Dances with Wool. <laughs> the name completely escaped me. Um, so it might be a great opportunity to use the yarn that I purchased at Dances with Wool, the, um, the, the yarn that's been dyed in Richmond. Um, so that would be um, super cool, super cool. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's July and August. Uh, lots of knitting plans coming up. And uh, I have just one more thing for you, and then I'm going to hop off of here, especially because my computer keeps saying that um, something is getting overloaded. So. <laughs> I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. That'll be fun. Um, so yeah, one last thing. Um, I have one purchase to show you, and this is a very exciting purchase. So you may recall um, I buy all of the, uh, I have a tendency to buy all of the different advents, the yarn advents. I am a fiend for yarn advents. Well, Rebel Woolworks um, recently, a couple months ago, um, put out that she was going to put together a, uh, a retro summer advent. And the color, the color inspiration that she put up for it was fantastic. And uh, hold on just one second. 
I keep getting this message. Let's just give me one second. Okay. So, <laughs> I turned off some background programs. Hopefully that will help. Nope, it's still telling me it's overloaded. Okay. Hopefully this video will still turn out all right. We'll see. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, Rebel Woolworks uh, decided she was going to do a summer, a retro summer advent. And the color inspiration palette that she was showing was just fantastic. And I loved her. Uh, she did a Halloween advent last year. I got a, um, a Christmas advent from her as well. And I love her colorways. I love her style. Um, so I decided, and this was the only, one of the only, it's not the only, she's not the only dyer who's done uh, a summertime type advent or countdown. Um, but it was probably the first one I heard about and it seemed like such a unique idea. Um, so I just received it uh, earlier this week, over the weekend, um, and I'm super, super excited. So it's designed to start on June 1st and count down to, uh, to summer, uh, which is the 20th or 21st. I forget what the first official day of summer is, um, but it should be uh, June 20th or 21st. And so it is um, mini ski. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the mini skins. Um, so, and this isn't, this isn't terribly much to look at, but I'll put it down here anyway. Um, so, Retro Summer Advent, um, 80 yard mini skeins, 920 total yards, 8020 Super Wash Merino Nylon, which is one of my favorite blends. Um, and it comes with, there's two packs. Um, let me move the camera up. Okay. Uh, so, there are two packs like this. So there are, um, one, two, this is, yeah, so this one goes to the 19th. <clears throat> so we've got the, the two packs, I'll just grab them. Two packs of the minis. And then for the grand finale on the 20th, there is this full size skein that coordinates and goes with it. So there is the full size skein. So, <clears throat> that is going to be starting June 1st, which, uh, which is Tuesday, Tuesday next week. So yeah, um, I'll start opening these next week and I'm very, very excited about it. Very, very excited. Um, I can't wait to see what the colors are going to be. I think they're going to be fantabulous, uh, based on her, um, her inspiration photos, uh, and her previous work. I think it's going to be super awesome. I just haven't decided exactly how I'm going to, um, to share the opening with you. Uh, what I may do is, uh, and I'm, I'm taking a, a bit of a hint from, um, Michelle over at, uh, Bendy Stitchy. What I may do is do a quick opening videos of each skein each day and post that over on Patreon, uh, and then put that into a compilation video at the end that I'll post here on YouTube, um, because that might be easier than trying to show you several skeins all at one time or opening them. Um, cause I, I don't, I, I'm not in a place this summer to do a video every single day <laughs> to post on YouTube. It's just too much this time of year. Um, so when it comes, when it comes time for Flossmas again, it will be an everyday thing, but, <laughs> but not right now, not right now. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be exciting. Uh, that'll start next week. And, uh, I, I'm hoping that uh, you will like the colors as much as I'm sure that I will. So uh, that's what I have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed it. I will be back with you again on Friday for Floss Tube to talk about all the cross stitchy goodness. Um, we'll see what I have to talk about. Well, I have talked. I'll have stuff to talk about. I don't know if I'll have whoops to show this week. But we'll see. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, I hope you're having a great time or at least uh, the best time that is available to you. Um, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon. So in the meantime, remember to stay hydrated. Make sure to take all the meds that you need to take, maybe some vitamins as well. And remember that you are good enough. And I will see you again next time. Bye.